Well, with the unsuccessful rollout of the Obamacare website, many lawmakers have been calling for Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius to resign. Adding to that course of calls is the ranking member on the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee. Earlier today, I spoke with him and asked him if he was satisfied with what he heard today. No, I'm not satisfied. She should step down. I mean, if this were the private sector, that kind of performance wouldn't be tolerated. And she should step down. Somebody else should take charge. Well, she said she was sorry. She said she regretted it. She says she's working on all the problems. Why isn't that good enough? Well, it's not good enough. You know, Admiral Rickover created our nuclear navy, and he told the captains of the submarines, look, you're in charge of the reactor too. If there's ever a problem with the reactor, your career's over. And so we never had a problem with the reactors. That's what we need here. We need accountability. Even in the public sector, we need accountability. Accountability, a big theme with you. You know, you called for your resi her resignation. You're not backing off of that right now. No. Interesting. You've asked for documents, though, and what you want is a weekly report. Sure. What do you want to see? Well, we want to know how many people have tried through the exchange to to buy Obamacare, uh, how many succeeded, in what zip code do they live, what level of insurance did they buy. We need to know that. We ought to know it every week. You know, before the internet age, RCA knew how many records Elvis was selling every, every day. You know, I mean, Ford knew how many cars it was selling every day. McDonald's could tell you how many hamburgers they're selling every day. Now we're in the middle of the internet age. The Obama administration should be able, really, to tell us every day how many people are signing up what are they buying it doesn't the problems with the website tell you just how dramatic this is that they they she seems to be saying we can't tell you we don't know we don't have the information do you buy that well if they don't know it's worse than I even think and and the important thing is the website's not the biggest problem the biggest problem yeah. is going to be the canceled premiums the millions of Americans who are going to find on January 1 that the premiums that the president said they could keep are being canceled because they're not legal under Obamacare and businesses are going to be finding that the costs are so high they're going to drop a lot of their coverage and their employees are going into you know into Medicaid and businesses are also struggling because of the 30-hour work week requirement that they're going to have to cut pay in effect by putting employees on 30-hour work weeks to avoid the Obamacare what do you mean that these they, these premiums aren't legal what I mean is that under Obamacare, only some insurance policies are legal. And you may have an insurance policy with, say, a high deductible that you right. afford, that you like. The Obamacare may say, that's not good enough for you. Therefore, that policy cannot be issued by an insurance company after January 1. So your policy's gone. So you then have to go on an exchange through a website that doesn't work to buy insurance, or you'll be fined by the Internal Revenue Service. Well, Senator, that's an issue that we've been talking a lot about this week. It's hundreds of thousands of people already seeing their policies canceled. And for that very reason, they don't meet the requirements of the Obama administration. Well, it's more than hundreds of thousands. I mean, just in California, Florida, and New Jersey, we've counted up at least a million and a half Americans whose policies will be canceled on January 1, which is about 10 times the number of people who've applied for insurance in just those three states. Astonishing fact. And as we look forward, one of the things we're hearing is that the costs are in a big debate. We don't know how much this thing is costing us. Here's what Sebelius had to say today about what she's paid out for this website. Listen to this. Can you give me a ballpark of what you have spent on this website that does not work, that individuals cannot get to? What is your cost estimate? So far, Congresswoman, um, we have spent about $118 million on the website itself, and about $56 million has been expended on other IT to support the web. So that's $174 million. In last week's testimony, the IT contractors themselves said they spent nearly $500 million. Yeah. So who's right? What's the real number? Well, I don't know the number. I've heard 400. But the fact is, this is the president's signature achievement. He's had three and a half years to do it. I used to be a governor. That's smaller potatoes. But on something that was important to me, I'd put somebody in charge. I'd meet with them every week or every month and say, is it on budget? Is it getting done? And if it's not, I'd get somebody else to do it. I don't know why the president hadn't been doing that. One final question. 
a couple of years ago, February 2010, you told the president, if you put this program in place, uh, you're going to raise people's premiums. Yeah. It's going to cost people more money. He said, uh, you didn't have the facts straight. What's the reality? Well, the reality was then I was right, and today I'm proven right, because I said, Mr. President, the Congressional Budget Office has said that individual premiums are going to go up under your plan. He said, you don't know the facts. Turns out today, individual premiums, and there are 19 million Americans who have those, are seeing premium increases of maybe 50% to 100%. We've got a long way to go. Senator, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Thank Appreciate you. it.